This video is going to show you how to run a Pearson's correlation in SPSS and how to report the results in an APA format. So the data we're going to be looking at is a very simple experiment that looks at the association between alcohol consumption and reaction times. Um, our first variable here is blood alcohol content and this is measured as a percentage, so the percentage of blood that is actually alcohol. And then we've got a reaction time measure which is a simple reaction time task which participants had to respond by pressing the space bar when a circle on the screen turned red and we've got their reaction times here measured in milliseconds into two decimal places. Both of these variables are therefore continuous variables. They're actually ratio data because both have an absolute zero and in this case as well, which is critical, both have a normal distribution. So. We want to see what's the association between alcohol and reaction times and we assume that as alcohol content goes up, so will reaction times. Because it's continuous data and both have a normal distribution, we can run a Pearson's correlation to, com to look at the association between these two variables. To do this in SPSS, we go to the Analyze menu and then Correlate and then Bivariate. And this gives us our Bivariate correlation window. So these are the variables that appear in your data set and these are the variables you wish to correlate. So we just want to look at the association between these two variables. So we click them both across. Now the default in SPSS is Pearson's correlation anyway. And you can see there's some other options, Kendall's tab and Spearman. And these, will be, these are covered in other videos. We've also got test of significance. And this is whether your p-value is going to be two-tailed or one-tailed. There is a considerable amount of debate over the appropriateness of two-tailed and one-tailed um, p-values and you'll see there's a lot of people who will argue that you should always use two-tailed however there are many cases in which actually a one-tailed p-value should be computed really um, however what we're going to do just for today um, to avoid any of these arguments we're just going to stick with a two-tailed test of significance if you were to run a one-tailed what you'd say is the p-value computed would just be half of the two-tailed p-value. We can also have this, this is automatically checked, this is flag significant correlations. So correlations that are significant will be starred in the table. Of course because the table gives you the exact p-values you should be able to tell which ones are significant anyway but you might as well leave it as starred anyway. And that's basically it to run a Pearson's correlation in SPSS. We just simply click OK and this gives us our correlation matrix. And you can see we've got blood alcohol content and reaction time there. And we see everything appears again here, blood alcohol content and reaction time. Now the way it computes this, it essentially just does absolutely everything twice. So first of all you'll notice it says one and one there. This is because if we look across, we've got this is the correlation between blood alcohol content and blood alcohol content, so it's the variable correlated with itself. This gives you a correlation coefficient of one, i.e. there's a perfect positive correlation. And of course, this is always the case. If you correlate something with itself, it's gonna be perfectly correlated with it. Likewise, reaction time compared to reaction time. So you just, these are completely irrelevant. They have, there's no value in looking at this whatsoever. What matters is, is the association between blood alcohol content and reaction time here. And as you can see, this appears again here because this is the association between reaction time and blood alcohol content. It's just the same thing. So we only really need to look at this one area here in this table. And what you can see, this is a significant positive correlation. If it was a negative correlation, we'd have a minus before the correlation coefficients. Because it's a positive correlation, this means the blood alcohol content goes up, so does reaction time. So the other thing we get in this table here is the significance, so our p-value. And as you can see, we've got p-value of exactly 0 0.001. The other thing that appears here is n, so that's simply the number of participants in the data set. We need all these figures when we report our Pearson's correlation if we're writing up in a sentence in APA format as appears here. And as you can see, what we've done, we've reported R, and then in brackets, we reported 73.
The value that goes in brackets after the R is n minus 2. That's your n. 75 minus 2 is 73. And then we report the correlation coefficients. And remember, we report inferential statistic values like this to two decimal places, so 0 0.931. And then we write our p value. This is the exact p value that's calculated. So we'd write this as p equals 0 0.001. So the reader, when we write this full sentence, can see there's a significant positive correlation between blood alcohol contents and reaction times. And then we've given them the specific values here as well. The other useful thing about Pearson's R is it also can be interpreted as an effect size. It's relatively easy to interpret a Pearson's correlation coefficients as an effect size. Generally speaking, 0.1 is viewed as small, 0.3, medium, 0.5 is large. There is actually a, a very simple calculation that you can do to work out approximately the proportion of variance one variable um, is associated with in the other. Um, and that is just to square the correlation coefficients. If you square the correlation coefficients, that gives you an approximation of the amount of variance that's accounted for in one variable by the other variable. This is not necessarily means causal, it is simply shared variance. So if we take this value here, 0.39, and we just put it in the calculator and we square it, we get a value of 0.15. That's rounded just to two decimal places. So approximately 15% of variance in reaction times in the sample was accounted for by the blood alcohol content. And this R squared statistic is something that you may be familiar with or you may become familiar with later on when you look at regression analyses because that's how we judge variance accounted for in a regression analysis. It is the R correlation squared gives you an R squared value. So we can also conclude as well as there being a statistically significant association between these variables there's, there's also a medium strength association between the two variables as well. So we've got that little bit more information. You now know there's, a, there's about 15% of variance shared between these two statistics. So what I'm just going to briefly show you as well, just what it looks like when we start running more and more correlations, because the correlation matrix in the output gets a little bit more complicated. So what we've got here is, um, we just added to the data set, we've got errors, just errors in a, um, another task. So a number of times participants make a mistake in a simple task, which we also believe will be influenced by alcohol consumption. So if we were to run these correlations, and now we've got three variables, let's have a look what the output looks like now. So as you can see, now we've got the tables it's expanded somewhat, it's our three, three by three matrix. We've got our three variables on the side and the three along the top. Now, as you can see, as before, we've got everything correlated with itself. So these are all completely irrelevant because they're all one, guaranteed to be one. It has to be one. Now you can see what we've got is the association between blood alcohol contents and reaction time, as we saw before, 0.391, significant association between the two. And now we've got an association between blood alcohol contents and error. And that's an even stronger association. So now we've got a, a a large effect size here, 0 0.50. So if we were to work that out, as I showed you before, squaring it, you get approximately 25% of the variance in these two measures is shared. And we also get an additional one here that actually we weren't particularly interested in. We we're interested in the effect of blood alcohol content on these two measures, but because it's a matrix, it also gives us this. It shows us the association in our sample between reaction times and errors as well. And as you can see, it's a positive association between those two variables as well, which is just about significant, not particularly strong association between those two variables. And if we were to add more and more measures, the matrix just gets larger and larger and larger. So it's always worth bearing in mind that you only really need to look at half of the table, because this, this half is just a repetition. It's exactly the same statistics, everything's a mirror. If you put a mirror down the diagonal of the table, it's just the same statistics repeated again and again, so we only need to look at half. So this hopefully has given you a, a brief intro into how to run a Pearson's correlation in SPSS. Um, Pearson's correlations aren't always the suitable one for you. You may It may be necessary for you to do Spearman's correlation or Kendall's tau. And if you wish to do these, there is a video guide showing you how to write those up as well.